hope we will have uh, stimulating uh, hour uh, together as air, 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 air travel. So let's think about it, and we will return to return to this question later on. I heard people in Israel in the first wave that was between the beginning of March to the beginning of May around their homes, but everything else was closed. And anxiety during this time reported that their own economic situation and that of their families has worsened as a result of the coronavirus virus. 55%, it will not change. They were completely wrong. It is much worse at the moment. But the question, when I saw this report, when I saw this report, I was population in the country felt stress and anxiety. Why uh, this has happened? What are the brain effects? We have behavioral effects that must be reflected in the brain as well. So this is a graph showing the first lockdown period here, here in, in March. And then you can see the increase for the second wave period. This is the beginning of May. This is when the lockdown was released. And then you can see in red the scans that we have of, of individual subjects. Red and yellow are areas of which the volume of this area had increased during the lockdown. That was compared per subject for the scan before the lockdown that was done at the end of 1919 to the scan that was, that was, that was done in May or June. And what we see is that there is an increase in the volume of, of, of the regions that we know that is part of, of the complex that is called the medial temporal lobe, which is very central in memory processing, but is also the central hub in the brain for emotional regulation. This is the amygdala, you can see over here, the amygdala, affecting the brain, which is very, I don't know, very uh, causing some stress just to look at it, just terrifying to, to see these effects. So why this period had such an immense effect on our brain? So we can say it could be because of a new virus, without itself the restriction to freedom, maybe the uncertainty about the future, maybe financial concerns that came out of it, maybe it's the social distancing that we are not used to, especially not in the Middle East. And, and we can always ask, is it specific to Israel, because this is the population that, that we have followed leadership. This is the technology that replaced all of it. And this is the air travel around the world, which is much, much more significant than what it was in the 80s. Surely air travel would accelerate the spread of this the disease. But would it change our reaction to it, or eventually it will, it will become the same? It may, maybe slower if it was in the 80s, but it would be the same situation. So I doubt if air travel should be the cause, the cause for, for the progression of the disease or our reaction to it. As for leadership, so there's a change in leadership, obviously. Just to look at what they've said over the last six, six months, uh, you, you can see that they didn't know how, how, to, how, how to, to lead the situation. Uh, taking into account this, this wave that Trump said a few months ago. The thing that happened in Israel when the beginning of the virus, the prime minister stood in prime time and said that the coronavirus can lead to a myriad of dead in Israel. Two months later, ease your lives, get out, get a coffee, get a beer, and have fun. And currently, we are now with, with, with the, the largest daily COVID positive per million worldwide. In Brazil, the, the Bolsonaro saw that, that Brazilians would not get anything. He was wrong at the end. In Belarus, tractors will cure everything, drink vodka, whatever, to, to stop the disease. Or in Mexico, nothing happens if you hunt. So this is not the shiniest, this is not the best hour of leadership. But I will say something very unpopular. I am not sure they are the ones to blame directly at what happens to us. Maybe indirectly, maybe indirectly. We'll get to that in the second, but I don't think they are to blame. So I'm going to bring you now my world in a very similar ma uh, manner to what we are experiencing today. In 1980, the world leaders would have been as clueless as the one that we have today, but our re behavioral reaction would have been different. I don't think that the amount of stress and anxiety that the population, at least here in Israel, has experienced because of the virus would have been the same if we were in the 1980s. So a new virus without an ontology. Scientists are unable to answer basic questions about the virus. We don't have vaccine, we don't have therapy, misinformation, a lot of fake news spreading out in 2020, lack of leadership, all of it is true, but eventually, I want to argue that the lockdown effect on the human brain 
is a sign on our current, in 2020, inability to, to cope with long, low intensity, stressful situation combined with the fake news that we are having and poor leadership and, and all the rest. But why? But why? Let's dive in. 24 hours TV giving you breaking news of every tiny little detail that happened anywhere in the world and you are exposed to it at, at every moment. There is a coronavirus here, there are more people dying here, there are more infected people, people in that neighborhood, in other neighborhoods. So you are always getting this information to your head. In the night or, or, or some, some, uh, some reports uh, from investigators in the 80s, we, we would have gone to specialist, uh, specialist program like 60 Minutes or whatever. But now it's in the brain of change, and you can see these areas in red and yellow that have changed. Not going into details what this area do or, or what they are related to, but you can see a massive change in the brain because they became addicted to alcohol. In another anecdotal study, I took the brain scans of 96 healthy volunteers. All of them, all of them were 30 years old at the age of scans, but at the, at the day of the scan but their birthday uh, was different. So some of them were born in 1967, which means that they were scanned 30 years later. Some of them were born in 1997, which means that they were scanned in 2017. But knowing which regions are dead and comparing the mouse brain into human brain, these are the same areas. They are amygdala, hypothalamus, sensory, striatus, it doesn't matter the names, but most of these regions are involved in addiction and anxiety. So I want to state to be more susceptible to stress and anxiety by addictive mechanism. And that should worry us if this hypothesis is true, and this is something that I want to prove in a couple of years, if this is a very addictive, especially children and, and youth, with news feed, real-time alerts, on-demand content, which most of it, most of it is fake, it's unproven, and in some way manipulative. This addiction as you saw in our study, it interacts, interacts with emotional and stress center in the brain, which may cause or may lead to increasing in Christ, to this in, in, in the anxiety and stress levels in the brain from a, an event that we have very, very little influence all, on or will influence us very little in that way. And, and it's brain and behavior consequences that we have shown are, are, are just a showcase to a much broader phenomenon, another pandemic another pandemic, I would call it the technology addiction pandemic that may have that may have devastating effects on the society and our life eventually much, much louder than the COVID-19, much, much louder than other effects. And we should be very, very focused on this pandemic because we now see just an example, just an example, what the status of our brain is and how it reacts to this kind of, of stressful events. If our brain will be addicted to technology, to the news alert, and whatever, social paranoia, inability to just or stress information of any kind, not only fake one, even real one, virtual life in the social media domain, that will be the future of society. And this is, this is terrifying to say, to say the least. But on the, on the same level, I will say that we, as, 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 as to begin with, this is something critical. We must increase the awareness and demand regulations from the government. And, and although the regulation of social media is not trivial, but it can be done. It can be done. Just imagine, just imagine that, that, that 50, 60 years ago, there was no regulation on smoking, no regulation on cannabis, no regulation on fat consumption and sugar. And these are, in, in a way, recommendations, but we took them seriously. People are now are, are aware of what smoking is doing, are aware of, of what high sugar levels May, may do to our body, to our body, are aware of the consequences of taking cannabis on a daily basis, etc. So we are all aware, aware of this, and this is very important. I don't think that, that the people today that know what are the consequences of smoking will take will take a 12 years old child and give him give him uh, a cigarette. 